all that. And then like he's on in the background, see he's on the phone, he's like holding the phone to his speaker, like to the speaker. And he's like playing the track over and over. He's like, yo man, you need to call me back, bro. Like call me back ASAP. And then he hung up, he's like, man, the one time D'Angelo doesn't pick up the phone. <laughs> You had mentioned that it, on one of the on Butcher Brown, you were on Concord Jazz. Mm -hmm. That's the same record label as Little Richard that was on. And so, is that how you secured the theme song for Monday Night Football mm -hmm. for NFL? Because honestly, like that's a big get. That's like the first <laughs> time somebody's had a different theme song for that joint in like 25 years. Yeah, or something. yeah, it was a long time. It was a long and, time. And and you got to do it to to remake to play the instrumentation under a little Richard joint. Yeah. Can you explain like what that was like or how quick that turnaround was or Yeah, so I mean essentially the label came to us with the opportunity and then we just kind of seized the moment like okay, well, it's in the middle of the pandemic. We got to figure out how we're going to get these demos done. We got to figure out how we're going to get the session done. So we all got tested and we all you know, went through the whole precautions and we got up in the studio and we just kind of just started sending stuff back and forth. We got in touch with the label, we got in touch with, we, there was a couple of Zoom calls with the label and, you know, reps from ESPN and essentially, I mean, we just kind of remade the song to their liking to make sure that everybody's happy on both sides. And it was it was a trip just to be like, you know, like Little Richard is, you know, one of the forefathers of rock and roll in that, in that sense. And to have him obviously like, you know, RIP and, you know, that's like right, kind of right after you pass, and just being able to be like there for like a landmark transition, like you know, I think the, the last one was Hank Williams Jr., right? Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was running for a long time, and just to be able to like be a part of history in that way, along with Little Richard, is me. It, it means it means a lot. It means a lot to us. You know? Yeah, I thought I would say what a very cool, uh, just very cool bit of exposure for you guys. Because and I say a bit, but I mean that was. 17 or 18 weeks of NFL football on Monday night for millions of people who tune in almost religiously, yeah, you're calling, right. you know what I'm saying? So yeah. like, to hear something that you created go that wide must have been pretty cool the first time you saw it on TV or something like that. What was really a trip was the first night that Monday Night Football was on. It was just like, I, of course, like I told my mom that we had like secured the, the spot and then I went to the Jamaican truck and I got like, Two big, <laughs> two big boxes of jerk chicken, and, and like me and my mom, like we sat and watched Monday Night Football just, just so like she can hear the song and everything. And but it was, it was like a trip just hearing my song that I recorded like at my house on national television. It was, it was like a, it was a mind, it was like a, a mind trip. Like it was, like I just remember her just being like, she was like trying to eat, and she was like, "You recorded this with the fellas at your house." It was like, it was like the whole night, like every time they would keep replaying it, it was just like, so this is you. This is like, this is really you. I'm just like, yes. <laughs> you sure really that's me. you, baby? <laughs> right, right, exactly, exactly, exactly. But no, I mean, like, it was definitely like, you know, proud son moment just being like, yeah, I like, I did, like, we did this at my house and, you know, just trying to, you know, trying to see through. Like, that's what I was saying in the sense of like being a part of history in that way. Just because, like, you know, like you were saying, like, how long was it? It was, like, 25 I years? mean, I'm not sure, but it was a long time. It was a long time, yeah. Long yeah. time. But just, just being able to be, like, the cat, <laughs> like, one of the cats in the band and, like, being from Richmond and, like, just getting that amount of press and just being, like, yo, these guys, like, did this. Like, they're a part of that lineage. For sure. Whether you like it or not. Because <laughs> I'm not going to front. When that song came out and like when that happened, it was a lot of, it was kind of some backlash. Well, because it had to do with like replacing Hank Williams Jr. Because mm -hmm. like there was some controversy with his song or, or uh, something he had said, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I had to go revisit that. But it, it's one of those things like, I just remember like when the song came out, when the articles like in Rolling Stone and on ESPN, when all those articles came out, it was like, you know, people were happy for us, but there was also like a little pocket of people who weren't so happy for us. Just kind of being like, how could they do this? Like you know, Hank Williams, like this is Monday Night Football history, and 
we're not gonna stand for this. And it's kind of like, yeah. my bad? <laughs> uh, <yeah>. Question mark? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, things are things are destined to change at some point. They don't they don't always stay the same. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, w I was thinking about that too because I remember there being like, not that there was like controversy, but nobody likes change. And, and they were like, well, who are we replacing Hank Williams Jr. with? Uh, Butcher Brown? Who are they? Who is this? <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Uh, but for me, I, I was very excited when I saw it because like you know I, I'd seen you guys and uh, played before. But that's not the only time that you found yourself on like a national like. TV broadcast because you also ended up uh, well not you personally but your song your music's ended up on the show Insecure, Insecure yeah. Yeah, yeah with yeah. with you uh, in your band Sons of the James, Sons of the James how did yeah. how did Rob that Hill. one kind of come along that was through the label too that was uh, shouts to uh, Fresh Alex the, the, the album we put out uh, Sons of the James is out through uh, Fresh Alex and like Kenny from Fresh Alex kind of came through and was like yo like, there's like, a good opportunity if you guys are down for it and we was kind of like yeah like sure like, you know send out whatever like to like as, as far as like getting sinks and all that, and it got picked up, and it's one of those, it's, it's, it's another one of those things where I'm just didn't I'm like, I'm like always just like scratching my head like how did this happen? <laughs> just like what? You know? Yeah. Um, Goddamn. But yeah, man. <laughs> so uh, downstairs too, man. We got some of this to, uh, for you to take home, but we have some wonderful rich uh, Richmond vendors. This is Handy Woman Creations made sweet treats, chocolate dip pretzels and cake pops. Uh, we got honestly smoked beef jerky over here. That's Both it. Richmond based companies that you can find everywhere. And she's mm -hmm. always at like First Friday events, Manchester Manifest. And honestly smoke is always like at the different local breweries that you can like buy at and stuff. But yeah, man, feel free to munch out, take some home. Like that's that's what it's here for, man. Oh, man Spreading Richmond. That, man. You know, you got the Richmond sounds. So we got Richmond taste, yeah, Richmond yeah, yeah, visuals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we just all, all the senses. I'm trying right? to get touched somehow and not be creepy with people. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know how I'm Alexander and this is Garrett. I'm we're, Garrett. We're honestly smoke. We found out we lived across the street from each other in college, and we were always cooking stuff in the backyard. When jerky came into play, and I had a recipe that I had messed around with. We went in, you know, that top spice, you can see it is bold. There's a lot of minced garlic, there's black pepper, there's smoked paprika, there's cayenne, there's garlic. There's all these great, great things in there that you just won't know. It's so textural and so vibrant, and then you bite into it, and it's like, boom, and it just lights you up. And not to be cliche, but we, we made our product with love. We started this because we both ate a lot of beef jerky. We'd go to the grocery store. And we still do. And we, of course we still do. Shout out Three Notch Brewing. Three Notch Brewing. Collab House and Scott's Edition, our Who Smoked All the Porter recipe that was a companion beer to the Mild Child Jerky. And we were gonna try to take that and rummage that into an awesome little holiday flavor for y'all. You type in here RVA, we haven't made this promo code yet, but it will be live by the time this is yeah, you are in the future, and this promo code is now live. Exactly. So, so if you use promo, car, promo code here, RVA, you will get 25% off your entire order. 25. So living in Jellowstone, your your home recording studio, home slash recording studio, mm -hmm, yeah. um, and having like people around, like, do you find that that helps foster like? flow we're just talking about flow and creativity like just having those people around in your space all the time oh yeah i mean it's just different energy like you know when you're around somebody you pick up their energy and in a sense like you have to be able to understand their energy to really cater to what kind of beat they want you to make or what kind of song they want your band to record or what kind of mix or what kind of you know it's just like having the influence like knowing who the person is mm -hmm. is it really like helps me out a lot to kind of like know my direction, like where I want to take their music in a sense. In a sense, like, because I mean, if they're like, you know, if we're hanging out and like we know each other and we can just kind of like talk and just kind of get the vibe and everything, there's like a certain point where it's just like, okay, well, I can kind of gauge of like what they like or, you know, they'll tell me what they like. Mm -hmm. And then in that sense, I'll start to kind of get into their world. Cause that's the thing is like, it's like as a producer, like, I feel like my job is to kind of find my way into their world because, you know, they're the artists. Like, I'm supposed to be there to, like, cater to the artists. Because, I mean, ultimately, we're both there to do the same job to make music and everything, but, you know, it's still their vision. And you gotta honor that. Yeah, um, now, you're, <laughs> when you say to cater to the artists, man, you can play so many different instruments. Uh, <laughs> you know, you've been learning since a kid, like, when you start thinking about a new song, is there an instrument that you kind of start off with a melody in your head or a bass line or something like? What's the first one that pops up to you? Most of the time, it's uh, it's drums. 
most of the time, it's, 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 well, most of the time it's drums and then a close second is keys, just because like certain things that I'm hearing in my head and certain things that like, like certain vibes that I want to get out, it kind of starts there. Just like, it's either going to be like a rhythmic thing, like a drum beat or just kind of like some harmonic structure from the keyboard. Because from, from either place I can find where the bass line is going and then start like building on top of that in that sense. So with Jello Stone being your home recording studio, you don't just record, but you're Brown and yourself in there. You mm -hmm. work with so many people from Richmond and, and mm -hmm. all different kinds of genres. Who have you been working with recently that you've just really enjoyed mm -hmm. um, what you guys have been creating? Uh, well, the latest thing that came out, I mean, the Nigel Hall situation, that's, that was like a couple of years ago. Just got pressed to vinyl and it's his first solo album in a long time and like it's one of those things where like, we worked really hard on it. and. Just kind of seeing, you know, just kind of like co-producing it with them. Just kind of seeing like where we took the songs and like how they developed. It was kind of like, oh man, like we saw it literally, like literally grow from the ground, you know. And here it is, like as a full-grown flower, you know. How long does it normally take you to get from the recording process with him to having like a fully fleshed-out project? Um, it varies. It varies. I mean, like, it just depends on like you know getting the mix right, making sure like certain instruments are actually like recorded and just kind of seeing like how he's feeling about you know his vocals and how I'm feeling about certain parts you know it really the, the time really varies it just kind of just depends on like how we're all feeling and make sure everybody on all fronts are, are agreeing on what the product the final product is going to be. Uh, how, how do you <clears throat> choose what projects you're going to work on because I'm sure so many people are like hey Will you please, you know, work on this, work on this, mm -hmm. and uh, I, you know, there's definitely been some good music that's come out of Jellystone. But like, how do you choose what you're gonna work on? Um, at a certain point, I mean, you, you know, like, I mean, I, I mean, me, that's kind of a problem I have is like, I want to work on everything, and I'm realizing that like, you know, I'm trying to like really like make sure I can secure my time to make sure that like I'm energized and like regroup to work on a, as much as I can. Yeah. But it's also one of those things where, you know, now that things are opening back up and we're just starting to hit the road a little bit more and we're about to go to Europe soon. It's like, there's so many people I want to work with that I'm kind of like, man, I want to, I really want to work right now, but it's also like, you know, I'm not going to agree to something where like, I know my full time isn't like invested, you know? And so, I mean, there's really no process in a sense. It's just like, if I, if I have time for it at that time, then I'm definitely down to work on it and definitely down to like give it whatever full attention I have at that time. But it's also just, you know, certain people have deadlines and certain people have different, you know, plans in the sense of like how they want to release things. So I'm just trying to make sure that I can do everything the best of my ability to make sure that I'm fitting within their plan and I can do the best of my ability to kind of see it through. I was looking at your Bandcamp, uh, and you have 32 projects on Bandcamp. That's a lot of projects. That's a lot, yeah. A lot of good projects. <laughs> and then, like, hearing the number, I'm just like, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You had me do a multiplication, bro. I was like, there's right. this many in a row and this many right, in a row. Because right, 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 I had right. to scroll down to get it. So. Uh, but 32 projects and, and everybody's got their favorites, you know what I mean? But I, I heard a story about you meeting Mad Lib and him having a favorite that maybe you didn't expect him to have uh, as far as one of those beat tapes. The Christmas joint. He mentioned, that was a crazy night. Just like being, well of course like me and the homies, like me, my homie Griffin, shouts to Griffin, my homeboy uh, X, you know, San Genesius, like we just like took the trip, we was like, oh man. Man, it's gonna be at U Street Music Hall. And the tickets are like, how much? Oh yeah, we gotta go, we gotta go. So like made up a whole day trip. Went up there, caught the show, saw some homies there from Richmond, from all over. And so we're just chilling. So then like at the end of the night, like people are leaving, we're just kinda hanging around. We see Egon and we're just kinda like, yo, like, like, it'd be dope if you can get a picture with Mad Lib. Like, you think it'd be cool with that? And he was like, let me ask him. Cause sometimes he's, sometimes he's cool with it, sometimes he's not. Let me just make sure he's cool with it. And then I saw him across the room taking pictures with everybody else, and then I'm just like talking to everybody. I'm like, oh shit, yo, we get that, we get that, we get that. And so, <laughs> so then like 
you know, Egon comes over, he's like, oh yeah, like, you know, these guys want to take a picture. And I'm just, you know, we're just like dabbing up, like, yo, man, if you love your music, love your music. And I'm like, yo, man, you know, what's up, man? I'm DJ Harrison. And he just like took my shoulders and like held me back. He was like, yo, you're DJ Harrison? Yo, yo. He was, and then like, he just like, he like, he like hugged me and was just like, would not. He was like, yo, man, the Butcher Brown stuff, man, that Christmas album. And in my head, my face is just like, wait a minute. You see what I'm mean? like? It's just like, kind of like he said Christmas album. Yeah, he he was like the Christmas album, like but and then he said Butcher Brown. I was kind of like, wait a minute, he really, he really knows like my me one of my musical heroes like knows that, and it's just kind of like it's like it was a it was a it was a it was a mind fuck. It was definitely a mind fuck. Like to the whole point where like we drove home and like the car ride was like you know from D.C. to Richmond it was like halfway half of the car ride was silent. <laughs> we, we were all in the car just like. What just happened? <laughs> like, like, just like it replaying in my head, you know. But yeah, I mean, that mo that was kind of one of those moments where it's kind of like, okay, maybe you are doing something right. Maybe you should kind of just stay on this track for a little while longer, you know. Has there been a, another moment like that where you felt, you know, like, yeah, I'm on the right track if if this person's aware of it, or has there just been like another moment where you've you've taken a second to breathe and been like, oh, this is I'm I'm doing it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean, this is a couple of years ago now, but the Jack White scene, like playing playing on a studio session with Jack White was like, it's like, obviously it's like the first time I've ever been like in like a rock and roll situation where it's just like, oh, like Jack wants this. He wants this keyboard. He wants this compressor. He wants this much tape ordered or shipped from wherever, wherever. And it's like the next day, it's just like it's, everything is there in the studio. Like we walk in and like everything he asked for is there. And it's just like, Yo, well, you know, just like whole different level of yeah. of business at that point. But even just like being in the room with him and just being like, oh man, I gotta make sure I'm on mic. I gotta make sure I like listen to the music and get my notes and everything straight and make sure I'm playing everything. He's just like, oh no, man, like you know, we're just gonna play, we're just gonna jam, we're just gonna you know kick it. And here's the idea: just gonna listen to the ideas and just go in the room and just see what we can do. I will say, Jack White's guitar amp, loudest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> loudest thing I've ever heard in my life. Like. So loud, <laughs> like loudest thing ever in my life. How long were you in there recording with him? Um, we were there at uh, Sears Sound for three days. I got the call on like a uh, Sunday, and it was just like, "Yo, man, I think this guy is like emailing me about the session in New York, and I can't do it." And then my manager was like, "My manager at the time was like, Yo, man, I think this is for Jack White. I think this is Jack White's manager.'" I was like, "Jack White, like the Jack White," and then. An hour later, it was just like, okay, well, if you want to do the session, you know, I, I got you the hotel room, I got you the plane tickets, they got you all transportation and everything covered, and it was just like, it was the same thing I was saying, it was just like, like rock star, just being like, oh, this is already done. You're like, I'm going to say no to this? Yeah, and it was like Sunday, it was like Sunday evening at like 7 o'clock, and the session was in New York Monday, the next day at 10 a.m. Wow. Yeah, so it was like... I had to act fast. <laughs> Get on that plane. Exactly. It actually started with my mom. Like I went grocery shopping with her and was starting to see all of the alter all the options that are out there. I just was like, yo, like I can make all kinds of pretzels. I would come up with a bunch of cravings and then start selling them at work. We I spent a lot of time like making sure every detail is like perfect. I just knew whatever was gonna come out was gonna be real because like I swear to I, I live and breathe this like handroom creations. It was really important for us to be able to provide something for our vegan community, gluten-free community, our sugar-free community. The pretzels are like pretzel ladies, the cake pops are lady cakes. So just kind of trying to pour into that feminine energy and that you know, I can have kids and still own my own business. Like, I can do it all. Um, now, I'm sure something that's had your focus a lot recently is you've been cooking up a solo album. Mm -hmm. When is that coming out? Tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> what's, what's going on with that, man? Um, well, it is being mastered as we speak. Like. It's not even on the version I sent y'all. Like, it's 
It's crazy. Man. Okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't going to say anything, but the version he sent us is amazing. <laughs> uh, I, I've, been, I've been listening to it. Um, what is the album called? Again. It is called uh, Tales from the Old Dominion. Tales from the Old Dominion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little, little Virginia influence. Oh, yeah, got, in got to, man, got to. I mean, that's my thing. Like, I always want to, like, represent for, like, the home team, represent for the city, represent for, like, the people I grew up with, my friends, my family, you know, just kind of, like, make, you know, make those people proud because in a sense it's like, you know, money can't really buy that shit. So it's kind of like when you, when you have a chance to, like, really do something that means something to you and everybody else, it's like, you know, go for it. Yeah, why not? How, how often do you get a chance to, like, really touch people? Um, how long were you working on your album? <sighs> two, two and a half years. Wow. And I was kind of like, well, it was just like, I started doing it after the Hazy Moves album, and it just kind of like, you know, a lot of stuff happened mm -hmm. in the sense of just like, you know, went through a breakup, went through, like, you know, f death in the family, and kind of failed business ventures and shit like that and kind of I kind of just stepped away for a while and got my scene together and it's like once the it was really when the pandemic hit it was kind of like well I have nothing but time I'm in my house I'm surrounded by all these rinky dink <laughs> rinky dink like music gear or whatever it's like I need to be able to like finish this I need to like if there's like a if there's not anything telling me to finish this it's right now it's just you know this pandemic it's being in the house and it's like I sat down and like started writing, started uh, you know recording different ideas, and just kind of started putting stuff together. And it's funny because like the album where it stands now was a totally different album from what it was in like June of last year. Because I mean there was like like half of the tracks that are on the album now like weren't even like a thing like a year ago like. So it's a lot of new stuff that a lot, you've come A lot, a lot of newer stuff, yeah, but it's just like hearing like the older stuff that I took off, I'm like going like through the list before I even like send like the stuff off the master, I'm like going through the old playlist, I'm just like, damn, there is that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that one too, that's that one too. And I was kind of forgetting about it, but yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm just, it's one of those things where I feel like, you know, now that that's completed, I can just kind of move on to the next project. You know, start doing beats and start doing freelance, more like more freelance stuff, and mm -hmm. just kind of just like let it just let it just sit in the oven for a while, let it cook, and then once it's time to come out, it'll be it'll be what it is. That's dope. I hope that more people used this kind of time out from the pandemic and the lockdown and all that to kind of reassess things mm -hmm. and get back on projects uh, projects that they've been meaning to do. Right. Can I can I mention one thing? Yeah, man. You were talking about uh, projects that I was excited. I guess it's gonna be coming out. Um, Towards the later half of the year, and so by that time, another album of mine is coming out. Where's that uh that bag? Uh, right here. Oh, cool. So this is a funny story. So there's this um, thank you. There's this jazz singer named Kurt Elling, and we recorded the album at my house, and mm. it's this. Ah. So it's Kurt Elling. It's me, Kurt Elling, Charlie Hunter. And uh, Corey Fonville. Now, you guys are like going around and playing different shows in different cities. Aren't you like going to London or something? Mm hmm. I'm, yeah. leaving, I'm leaving for Europe in. What's today? Fourth, right? Leaving for Europe in 11 days. So, how did, how did your relationship and rec recording with Kurt Elling come about? So, this album came about, in a sense, through the pandemic. Like, we got up in October of last year. And so, Charlie Hunter knew Corey. Farmville, just from touring and from playing in different places and whatnot. And, you know, side note, Charlie Hunter is the guy that's on Voodoo who's playing Spanish Joint and The Root and Great Day in the Morning. And he's playing like a hybrid guitar. Hybrid is like, he's playing bass and guitar at the same time. Wow. Like, yeah. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> like, yeah, like, like, he's playing bass with like his thumb and you know, doing the like I don't know. To be, I don't know how he does. It. That's wild. <laughs> but yeah, he's playing. He's playing a hybrid guitar. But you know, him and Corey knew each other in a sense. Like um, he was working with Kurt Elling on writing some new tunes, and they were kind of going for a new sound. And so, you know, Charlie. You know, I guess Corey had put uh, the Butcher Brown scene in Charlie's ear, or either Charlie picked it up just from him being around, or like in a sense. Me, Corey, and Charlie started talking, and Charlie was like, man, I got to come to Richmond. Like, I, I want to come, like, you know, play with y'all, hang with y'all. And then this opportunity came up with Kurt, 
And <laughs> funny story, once, you know, it was during the pandemic, so we all got tested, we all made sure everybody was cool, and we all came to Jellystone and we were just working on tunes, just kind of just, you know, sitting in the room, seeing what's going on. Like I was playing keys, he was playing the hybrid guitar, and then Corey's playing drums. This made it sound so casual. He's just over there playing the hybrid yeah, guitar. Yeah, he's, you know, over there just playing, just ba playing bass and guitar at the same time. time yeah. And this is like, so we're sitting there and we're recording, we're like writing the songs and we're recording everything. And so I'm thinking we're recording demos. And I'm just like, okay, well, like, you know, just so he can hear the song and hear the structure. So send out the demos. And then Charlie's like, oh, man, Kurt really loves it. Just got the phone with him. He loves it. He's writing to the song right now. And then come to find out, Kurt goes to record the vocals. I think it was in, like, somewhere in Illinois. He, went to, he goes to record the vocals, and I find out, like, oh, the song, the, the stuff we were recording isn't the demos. It's actually going to be on the album. Oh. <laughs> like. What you hear there was from that. Yeah. Like, Jellystone. <laughs> like, with Charlie Hunter and Kurt. And it's like, this, like, that's what the album is. And it's funny thing. It's Kurt and Charlie have been like coming to Richmond and like doing rehearsals and doing gigs and whatnot. And so they, we did a gig at the Hall, just kind of like, you know, getting the feet wet and like getting the band together and like getting used to the songs. But that was my first time meeting Kurt Elling was on that gig. And we had recorded an entire album together. <laughs> <laughs> the internet's amazing, isn't it? Right. Super, super blue. <laughs> Man, that's super cool. Yo, yeah. I, I want to ask you more about, like, Richmond broadly. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your sense of, like, the music art scene now? And maybe if you had a thought on it from maybe 10 or 15 years ago, because to me it feels different. Mm -hmm. To me it feels like there's more energy, there's more people pulling together now. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, like, w what do you think about the city and, and the music and where it's going and what's happening? I definitely agree with that in a sense. I mean, I, I also feel like it's it's pulling from that now because of, like, all the groundwork that's been laid. Like, you know, like you were saying, like, 10, 15 years ago, like, with the, with the earth, you know, like, the earth tones and the JPS and, like, you know, chocolate milk. And like, well, all, like, all of, like, you know, all of, like, those, those crews and shit. And the clip mode was coming through and all of that. Like, just having that groundwork laid and different just like different scene different scenes are just like i feel like they're starting to come up because people are starting to like just pay close attention to richmond like in general just like from the groundwork that we've laid it's just like based off of just like legit hard work and like putting in like legit time and effort like no facade like no smoke and mirrors no you know no no magic tricks in a way you know it's just everything is just authentic and it's real like whether you like whether you go see a hip hop show, or whether you go see a rock band, whether you go see a bluegrass band, whether you go see jazz, like everything is authentic, you know? It comes from a place where it's just like very honest, I feel. I do. I'm sorry. Um, I, I looked no, over no, you back exactly. there. My bad. Um, so I know that you are like talented across like all the instrument planes, but have you ever, I guess, working with a lot of vocalists, like ever wanted to do anything like with your own voice, like on any of your tracks? <laughs> That's what the, the new album. Okay. The new album is a, is a lot of me singing. A lot of you. And and that's the thing, like here, you know, I'm not sure if it's like this for everybody, but hearing my own voice back, I'm, I, I just cringe. I don't know why. It's kind of like, is that what I, is that what I sound like? Is that what I? But then I'm just kind of like, it, it becomes something where it's just like, I know it's coming from a place where like I'm internalizing certain things in the sense of like trying to really recreate certain feelings. And so like you know, at that moment in time when I'm like laying down vocals, I'm like, okay, well. I believe in it in that time, and it's like, yeah, like it feels good and it feels great to me. But then other times I'm kind of like, you know, like listening to this audio back, I'm just kind of probably gonna be like, why do I sound so nasally? <laughs> why do I like why do I sound so whatever, whatever? But you know, it's just like I'm not used to hearing my own voice, you know, outside of my head. I guess you know, but yeah, the new project's got a lot, a lot more vocals on it for sure. I mean, because she hears vocals as like an instrument, you know what I mean? Like oh to, yeah, to right, right, just, right, right, right. 
it's noise. She can't hear the words, and so she just likes how it sounds and stuff like that. So she's made me think of the voice as just like, nah, man, you're just putting another instrument and layering in it with. Oh, I mean, I mean, I'm talking about Richmond, I mean, D'Angelo is a prime example of that. Like, I can't tell you how many times, like, I still look at the lyric books and be like, yo, what was he saying? <laughs> but it, it, it just feels good. Like, you know, just like the inflections, it's like, like you know, like you said, it's an instrument. It's like the tone of it and just like the whole, like the inflections and different nuances of certain shit that he's singing. It's like, it's like I don't know what he's saying, but it feels good. <laughs> I heard that for a part of uh, the Black Messiah album that he had recorded his vocals underneath a blanket, smoking a cigarette. So it was like the most smoky, dense place that you could oh, record yeah, vocals, yeah, yeah. like underneath of a blanket, just like yeah, sitting it was, on the yeah, floor. Yeah, it was like a, it was like a little like, uh, like the studio walls have like those like huge curtains. Mm -hmm. So like they took one of those curtains and like took like a studio bath for it and like built it like a like a little teepee, like a, like an Indian teepee. <laughs> and this is like they put the Rhodes keyboard in there, they put an ashtray in there, they put a the little lamp and the remote to like the tape machine and everything. It was just like I, the only reason I know about it because I saw it in like the uh, the D'Angelo documentary. Oh, Did no. I send you that? No. I'm about to. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Don't ask me. No more. But yo, man, I want to say thank you for your time coming through uh, and A, being a part of the Richmond music scene and, and doing everything that you do for Richmond and putting so many other artists on. I mean, like, you look around this room like you're on a bunch of these different albums just doing things. That over there, Sam Reed was recorded at Yellowstone. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, big fan of what you do and thank you for coming through. Yo, and love the shirt selection today, man. I got, I got, I got to, I got to tell it. I gotta yeah, tell it, I got to tell it. Shirt selection. So like, <laughs> you know, I'm in the car. I'm getting, you know, I'm getting moisturized. You oh, can I, can I, can I tell you something? Cause you don't know this part. What's that? So as that, so Jai saw you pull up in the car. My son, he's downstairs, and he's like, he's in the car. He's like giving play by play. Look at, he's like, he's rubbing his hands together. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I was, I was he goes, lotion he, he, he goes, he turned off the car. He goes, I think he forgot something in the car. <laughs> so he's like, oh, he's he, was giving you, <laughs> he was giving you the, the whole run yeah, yeah. But he didn't <laughs> tell me what you were wearing. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so like, I get out of the car, walk on the sidewalk, you know, I'm looking at the address. I'm like, okay, this is, this is the right place, cool. Park the car. I, I get up, walk out, walk up the sidewalk. I see you open the door. And I look, he opens the door, and like the first thing I see is like, I just, the first thing I see, before I even see your face, I see bright blue. And I was just like, yo. <laughs> like, Totally unplanned, totally like, just left the chance. Like, you can't, you can't make that. I up. think it just means that you made a good shirt because if the blue is the first thing you saw, then the shirt stood out. You stood know what I'm saying? See, see, you see, see, see. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nah, I think it's a good shirt. Yo, yeah. go ahead, go ahead and throw the recording Yo, up again, man, so you, we can get a quest love story. Yo, I got oh, like, I, I never stopped recording. Yeah. Oh, okay, so we never stopped. It's good. <laughs> hey, he, that's he, what I'm talking he, he about. Going. Cool, cool. Yo, all right, so like. I might, oh, let me see. I got a, uh, oh, you hit that uh, AC for me? You good. So I got two, I got, I mean, I got, I got mad quest stories, but like. I look at that humble brag. I got, I no, got mad no, no, quest no. stories. No, 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 I'm like, no, 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 I was in New York. I was playing a gig with my homeboy, Maldi Acosta. I was like playing bass on this gig. We had this rehearsal, and he wasn't feeling well during the day, so I just kind of went around, like walked around, um, you know, Manhattan, just kind of just kicking it. And then this guy had messaged me the day before and was like, "Yo, like, I'm, you know, looking, to, uh, you know, looking for you. Like, like, would it be cool if you came to my job tomorrow? Like, you know, I saw you were in town. Like, I would, you know, would love to meet you. I love your music and." And I was like, yeah, I mean that's cool. Like, is it is it cool that I come to your to your job or yeah, whatever? It depends on what the like, job is, right? Right. <laughs> but then and then like he got back to me like later that day. He was like, oh yeah, man. Like you know, I'm like one of Quest's uh, music advisors. Like he he found out you were in town. And he wants to meet you. And I was just like, oh shit. <laughs> so then like I go up to um, Thirty Rock. So like I meet up with this cat. He's like, I'm wearing uh, um, Yo MTV rap shirt. I'm wearing like this by. Meet me by Radio City Music Hall by you know Rock, Rockefeller Plaza. So I meet up with the cat. I'm just like, yo, what's going on, man? Like, nice to meet you. He's like, ask me questions about my records and everything. So like, we're going into the 30 Rock building. I'm just like, yo, we're walking in. Like, I'm about to meet this dude. Like, holy shit. And so we go in. We check in. Got to get the pictures taken. Got to get a little pass and everything. We get on the elevator. 
and we get off the elevator and like we walk into like the little like you know you seen like the uh, Jimmy Fallon studio like where like the roots are like in the cranium like the little room and everything. Mm -hmm. So we walk in there and then like you know he's just sitting there like you know doing this NPC thing, but he's talking to the engineer and just like, yo man, what's up? What's up? What's up? He's like having a full conversation as he's like recording this thing that's about to be aired and like I don't even know like tomorrow or whatever. And I'm just like, yo, it's really and in my head. I'm just like, yo, it's really him. Oh shit! Like, this is crazy. And so like he's finished, and then like it's silent. It's like maybe like two seconds of silence, and before he's like, he looks at me. He's like, yo, so like, where'd you come from? Like, what? Like, like, like who? Like, he was like, I, I keep hearing your music. Like, you know, like the homies been showing me the music, and like, like what's up? And I'm just like, yeah, from Richmond, Virginia. Like. You know, at that point, like I was always keeping like the whole Jellystone catalog, so I had like stash box, I had, like I had, like all the CDs and everything. So I was like, I think a uh, Sam Reed CD had just came out, and I was just like, Yo, man, like you know, from Richmond, blah blah blah, like you know, like here's like some of the music I brought you, some you know, some music to take with you, or whatever. And he was like, Oh yeah, this is the joint you showed me. Oh yeah, this is the joint you showed me. And he had the Kings joint, he had oh, the Butcher wow. Brown joint, and I was like, Yeah, I recorded uh, the Kings joint. We like did it to, uh, to the cassette. He was like, Oh yeah, I heard it. I know. I know. I heard it, yeah, that, that, that's real cassette right there. And then, like, so we were just hanging. It's, it was like an hour we were just hanging. And, like, he's on Instagram, like, going through, like, my SoundCloud. And, like, he's, like, at the time I had this D'Angelo outtake thing on SoundCloud. And he was, like, playing it over and over. He's, like, yo, like, oh, my God. Like, like, what is this? Like, and I was, like, yo, man, like, you know, the D'Angelo outtake. He's, like, yeah, I know it's the D'Angelo outtake, but, like, is this all you? Like, you did this? You recorded this too? Like, it sounds just like it. He's, he's like, like, you know, I'm talking to, you know, the homies in the room. And, like, you know, by this point, like, the roots are walking in. I'm just like, he's like, he's just like, he's like, yo, man, this James Poison. Yo, what's up, man? And then, like, you know, Kirk's in there. I'm just like, he's like, you know, you know, and like, you know I'm, I'm trying my best. You know, I'm, I'm, on the outside, I'm cool. You know, trying to, trying to be cool, calm, collected. But in the inside, I'm just like, oh, my oh, God. Like, jumping out your chest, yeah, man. Like the, like, the roots are in here. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. And then, like, so he's like, you know, in the commotion, I'm just like, yo, man, like, I love your keyboard work. Like, talking to the roots and talking to the keyboardists and all that. And then, like, he's on, in the background, see, he's on the phone. He's, like, holding the phone to his speaker, like, to the speaker. And he's, like, playing the track over and over. He's like, yo, man, you need to call me back, bro. Like, call me back ASAP. And then he hungs up. He's like, man, the one time D'Angelo doesn't pick up the phone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, like, I left. It's funny because, like, after I left 30 Rock, it was kind of like... A, it was like I left 30 Rock and like my phone had died <laughs> and I was like kind of lost. <laughs> but like even then, like I mean, you know, it was a grid, so like I knew where I was going. I just had to like walk and couldn't call it or whatever. But it was like that whole walk, I'm just like, yo, that just, you know, it's like a lot of moments like that where it's just kind of like, this really happened. Like, what the fuck? It's disorienting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, it was wild, man. It was wild. And then the other time they get, they played at um, the Richmond Jazz Festival. That's kind of when it was raining. It was like sound system was going in and out. It was it, they played a good show, but you know the sound system from the festival didn't really hold up to like too well. It was kind of cutting in and out and all that. But we were talking backstage after the fact, and I was just like, "Yo, man, like, you know, like talking about D'Angelo. Of course, was like, you know, I'm like a huge D'Angelo fan. Obviously, if I haven't made that clear." already <laughs> but it, it was if we was talking about like yo man like you know just trying to figure out what d like what d is up to this is like 2016 2017 i think just trying to figure out I'm like yo man like i really want to work with him like you know what's he up to now like what's he doing and he was just like he was like yo man like i gotta make that happen like he, like he's kind of looking off he was like i gotta find a way to make that happen and that was just like like i just walked away from that you know, just like there's like those kind of stories where you walk away from it and you're just sitting there thinking like, how did this happen and what's gonna happen, you know?